Here we go with section 19.4. Entropy changes in an actual chemical reaction. In the earlier sections, we learned that entropy is symbolized by the letter S. And the first little point here says every substance has an entropy that is labeled S0. If you look at table 19.1, you will see many, many substances, and you will see that each of them has a value. The element S sub 0 will never be a zero number. We have a group of elements elements down here. Notice they all have actual values. We have a group of diatomic molecules here. Notice they all have values. Contrast that to the enthalpy, where we always made that equal to a zero. The other important thing to note is that the units are joules per mole Kelvin and not kilojoules per mole. You'll use that when you have to do some calculations. There's a little bit of redundancy because they talk about phase dependence. We had that in the last section, but I guess they wanted to show this quote unquote pretty picture. So if you look at entropy rising on the y-axis and you look at temperature increasing on the kx, on the zx axis, you can see that the solids have a lower entropy than the liquids that have a lower entropy than the gases. So I guess they want to make that point. We will move on. The next thing you have to know in this section is how is it that you do a calculation? But it's great news because you already know how to do this. You did Hess's Law back in chapter five. Someone would either give you the value or if you're doing your homework, you have to look it up in the appendix. And so I thought I would, uh, well, make you suffer. Here is a 151.0. And for each oxygen, it is a 205.0. For carbon dioxide, it is a 213.6. And for sulfur dioxide, it is a 248.5. All of these values are in joules per mole Kelvin. Talk about the units a little bit later in the chapter. If we're looking for a delta S04 A reaction, it will be the sum of the delta S0 of the products minus the sum of, oh gosh, minus the sum of the delta S0 of the reactants. I missed the blackboard. Anyway, I'll substitute in the values. For the products, we have a 213.6 minus a 2 times 248.5. Those are our products. We will subtract from that our reactants would be a 151.0. And then we need to multiply the 3 by the 205.2. What you will do, I guess I would call it plug it and chug it. You will come up with a 710.6. And that will be subtracted a 766.0. So you will end up with a negative 55.6. Uh, joules per mole Kelvin. Does that negative sign make sense? It says that our entropy is decreasing. So let's use what we learned in the last chapter. On the reactant side, we have one plus three for a total of four substances. On the product side, we have one plus two for a total of three substances. If we look at four versus three, we are going to more order, and more order says a negative value for delta S. So again, all of this is extremely logical. Since I tortured you with this slide, I thought for the next one, we will just put the numbers in before we started. So it's a calculation past the ice cube melting in your head. What we have is the famous, what is the delta S of the universe? And it will be the delta S of the system minus the delta S of the surroundings. I chose the ammonia reaction because we use it for a lot of different things. And I'm giving you what is the delta H of reaction? What is the delta S zero of the reaction? Note, the delta S zero of the reaction is the same as the delta S zero of the system. You could look up each of these values and come up with a number, but again, I wanted to show you where the number came from. Unlike 1210, we couldn't show you where much of anything came from. That is my delta S of the system.
What we want to do now is do the delta S zero of the surroundings. Now you notice that delta S of in the beginning of the chapter was again Q reversible divided by T. But Q reversible is really delta H at constant pressure. And so that's why we're using the delta H value. Why did we change the sign? Well, the heat is being transferred to the surroundings. It is making them more disordered, and that will give us a positive sign here. So when I do my surroundings calculation, using my delta H zero, the, I have to turn it from kilojoules to joules, it'll go 92,380. I have to do my temperature at Kelvin, and that would be 298 Kelvin. That's where those values come from, and that's where we get our value of 310. So once I had my delta S of system, once I had my delta S of surroundings, I place them into the universe expression, and I come up with a positive value for our number. Now, as I was looking at this slide ready to post it, I said, ah, darn it, I forgot to put the number two in to balance the chemical equation. Since we're not going for perfection, what we really are just going for is getting this through this. I said, I'm not going to record this one more time. I've already recorded it a number of times. So since the delta H S is a positive value, our delta H of the universe is a positive value, it says that the reaction will proceed spontaneously in the forward direction. Now you're gonna say, but that doesn't happen unless I apply pressure in a catalyst. See, that's what thermodynamics tells you. It says something is possible to go in the spontaneous direction as written. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the next section. As I did in the last two sections, take a look at the problems that were assigned. Make sure you can do them. And again, please do not laugh so hard. This could be so darn boring and I'm just trying to make it just a tad exciting. Thanks a lot.